I did one of those old one time going in through there. That's about all I can do is get my arm in there. The whole thing is big enough. Yep. I finally got that chain to put in. I'm happy. It's uh, sometimes it's sharper than this. So if you put, hold your sleeve to you come in. Put some duct tape over it. Alright, so um, we're back to this switch isn't, isn't, isn't around. It's not on. And you put your gauge is on. Don't worry about the little squirt. There's six pounds in there, and if you weighed that squirt, it'd be like a fraction of an ounce. So it's not. Alright, so this one has 108 psi on the low, and um, well, the scale is going to be 200. It's equalized just above 110, or uh, yeah, just above 100, between 100 and 110. So if, if, if you shut the unit off, <coughs> you shut the unit off and wait 10 minutes. The, the, uh, your pressure is on. You can watch either side of the compressor should pretty much be the same. Yeah, you can watch it while it's running. If you put if this unit's running, you put these on, and I, I'm going to show you one out in the test stand later. You'll see that if this is an R, this is R22 unit, so it's going to be running. And let's say it's an 80 degree day, it's middle of summer, 80 degree day, 80 degree water. So this gauge, when this thing turns on, this gauge is going to drop down to around 80. This one's going to go up to somewhere around 250. And it's going to be running right, right in that happy area. If you were, if you had this run, unit running and it shut off, you'd watch these just start to go, and you'll hear a hissing noise. Right. And that's the uh, the TXV allowing the refrigerant to pass from the high side to the low side. So that's what the that's that the hissing. air release. Yeah, there's yeah. two ways to tell that it's equalized. That hissing will slow down and stop, and also the gauges if you have them on. Right, so if this gauge, th this um, switch here is telling the heater not to run because the pressure is too low. It's down below, well in this one it's 40 PSI because it's R22. But it's down below the limits of this unit. And you put the gauges on and they look right. They're equalized, right? So I'm going to try a run test. I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to watch the gauge. If the gauge goes down, on this one it's 40 PSI, it's R22. So when this gauge goes down, if it comes down here and it hits 40 and this clicks off, then that switch is doing its job. But if this starts running and it goes down to 80 where it's supposed to be and it still switches off, um, kicks back off, then you know that this is a bad switch. You don't even need your refrigerant guy. You just take the, your wrenches. There's a lower one that you would hold and then the upper one you would undo yeah, undo the wires and undo it. And it, it this one will have, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's the same. It's just, it's so, a, so like not going to hurt anything. Yeah, when you're taking it off, you do the same thing it's got when a you're check taking valve. these off. These have, a, there's a, yeah, like a tire valve check valve. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Mm, okay. Just uh, take it off quick. These have, these are made to go on and off a ton of times, and it yeah. tries to disengage the pin before it disengages its o ring seal. These don't have that. So as you're twisting, you'll start to see the foam or the R, you hear the R22 coming out. Just keep going as fast as you can and get it off. <laughs> you're going to have some come off, and that's fine. Right. What you don't want to do is turn, 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 and then you're staring at it. <laughs> <laughs> so just keep going. It, 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 it will stop. The phone rings don't answer. Uh, okay. and, then, and then when you put the other one on, you're going to tighten it down, have your two wrenches. Tighten it down until it's kind of hand tight, and typically that's enough to stop it. And then take your wrenches and do do a snug to. You want to do the wrenches. Okay. If you don't, if you don't use two wrenches, you'll twist the. Uh, yeah, the the this, too, this, this is just copper. quarter inch copper. So if you were to just use this one wrench, you're going to twist it. You're not going to tighten. You're going to twist it. Then you're going to get free on out. You'll kick it and break it. And then it. it'll be your back. How do you know quick which one's the high pressure and low pressure switch there? Up here, it's the blue wires is cold, blue cold. These in the past have been red, white, or black, but they're also going to be the um, same as this. Left, left, left side, low. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, think it, I think we do put the stickers here yeah, the stickers and down there. there. Yeah. The other thing they is, should be in there. the way it's wired up, though, typically it comes out of the pressure switch, goes into the low pressure, yeah. then it, then through the time right. right into the high pressure. So typically the one the low pressure is after You can also look on the I mean it's hard to read it on this one without you'd have to kind of pull it out and look, but if you read the numbers on it, you'll see, you know, four hundred and 
500 is high, um, 90 and 100. And the same thing on the R22 units, it's 40 and 80, it's cut out at 40, cut in at 80, and 250 and 350. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if it's one of these switches, and you, if, if this was out of refrigerant custom lead, you're going to go through your things and say, oh, this thing's telling me there's no refrigerant, because there's, I, I got 24 here, and I don't have 24. If you put on the gauges, and they're at zero, or they're at 20, um, it's, it's missing refrigerant. You call them, they have to come out and look for a leak. Um, you should see um, the refrigerant pressure should equalize um, if Chart of static. No, but I think degrees F. So the outer ring is PSI, it's 110 PSI, but these inner rings are actually temperatures. R22 is the green scale. So, according to the green scale, it's 65 degrees, which is probably about right. So, um, on a warmer day, it's going to equalize a little bit higher. On a colder day, if it's 50 degrees, it's going to equalize at like 80, 85 PSI. Okay. So, Did you get that? It's like 65 degrees in here. And this inner scale is telling us the temperature. Right, this is equalized, but I don't know if it's high or low on refrigerant. Right. Until I look and say, all right, the temperature right now is 65. What's the, the refrigerant scale? Like, this one has R22, R12, and R5 over there. So the green scale is ours. Um, the green scale is saying that this refrigerant is, the refrigerant pressure is showing up as 65 degrees. It, it should match. So if, if, this, if today was 80 degrees, I might be wondering if this is a low pressure to be equalized at. In a run, I'd turn it on and run it, and then you would also see it running way down closer to 40 instead of up near. The low side is going to run approximately what the air temperature is. On a 70 degree day, it's going to be at 70. Right. 80 so degree day, it's going to be at 80. That's what it's running. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. So if, if it's an 80 degree day and this is your equalization pressure, you might be a little worried. But, I mean, you know, this scale isn't anywhere close to 100% accurate. I mean, there's plus or minuses in here. And, and then when you do a run test to see, turn it on. And if it, it's an 80 degree day and goes to there, well, it's probably not melting refrigerant. It's probably right. fine. But if it's an 80 degree day and it goes down to 50 and it's running at 50 PSI on an 80 degree day. If that it, switch is bad, though. If the switch is bad, you're either going to have run or no run. Right. So if, if you turn it on... And it kicks out, if this kicks out and it's at 90 PSI, then the switch is bad. This, if, you, if, if we turn this on, it was low on refrigerant, this thing would run and kick off right when that hit 40. Okay. And this switch is set at 40. What about if it won't run at all? Well, what might happen when it's low on refrigerant, it'll kick off at 40, and then it'll equalize at like 75, which okay. isn't high enough for this to ever kick back on. Right. Okay. But what I'm not, what but I'm when you put the gauges on, it'll, yeah. it'll be way down low. Okay, this okay. is probably free. Okay. Explain your, your gauges here in uh, the, these two valves on the side. Just, just allow pressure yeah. to go to the pressure yeah, gauges if or not. You, um, you're going to want these in the off, off position. What they the, do is allow access to this port. And if this is open, this one too. If I were to charge this with refrigerant, I'd hook this up to a tank of R22. And then by opening that tank, um, it's usually higher pressure than the system. You'll open it up, and if you see this needle start going up, well, that's because it's seeing higher pressure of the tank, and it'll be going through. If you open it up and the pressure goes down, then that's the pressure coming from the unit into the tank. Right. I mean, we're starting to get into the R22 stuff that you would learn if you wanted, if you guys wanted to do it yourself.